today we're going to do an unboxing of something I rarely look at, but I own and will probably never part with, but has a lot of sentimental value, and that is my wedding dress. Hi everyone, welcome back, it's Melissa. Today's unboxing is going to be something a little bit different, and it was inspired by my recent Instagram post where I shared with you a vintage photo of my husband and I back from 1982 when we were married. It is probably my most liked post on Instagram to date. And on that post, I got some interesting questions. One in particular was someone asked me to share what uh, makeup I wore on my wedding day, which I thought was really sweet of this person to ask, but kind of hilarious because who only knows? That was almost 40 years ago, and I certainly don't own any of that makeup anymore, thank God. I don't really remember what I wore. We'll get, ba we'll get back to that part a little bit later on. So first of all, this box. <laughs> I have no idea. My mother probably wrote this on here. So my family calls me Missy. Missy's wedding dress, plus hat, plus train. And this is... A store called Frankel's. The, I'm just intrigued by the box. There's nothing to do with what's inside. Yeah, I don't really even know what originally came in this. It's a crazy box and it is falling apart. But let's take a look inside. Okay, so it looks like a bunch of nothing. <laughs> this is my veil and the hat that I wore and it's very crushed. Had a long veil and I'm pretty sure, yeah, this unsnapped here so I didn't have to wear that gigantic long veil during the entire uh, wedding. We'll talk more about that later. And here is my dress. Probably the last time I looked at it was with Kate when she was a little girl and she had a lot of questions and she wanted to see it so we took it down and we looked at it. And I haven't looked at it since so it's probably been oh probably 10 or 15 years since I've had that box down. Now I'm going to preface this with, with the fact that I did not have my gown preserved. I didn't even have it dry cleaned because I felt like after the event who would really ever want to wear this again? I, I just didn't think anyone ever would, and I probably still feel that way. So it is very yellowed. There are stains on it. So let me start off by saying I made my wedding dress. When I was initially shopping with my mother, we tried on quite a few dresses and things that I had seen in magazines that I really liked when I tried it on, I thought they were cheap looking. I didn't really necessarily like the styles or I would try on something and I'd like the bodice of this, the skirt of that, and I, the sleeves of that one. I really never found something that I loved at all. And at that point in time, I had just finished school. I was a fashion major at the Fashion Institute of Technology. I had taken a lot of sewing. I grew up sewing. I had taken pattern making in college, so I knew how to alter patterns and even actually make my own patterns. And my mother said, well, why don't we make one? Okay, sounds like a plan. How much yardage does a wedding dress need? So the year is 1982, and I'm not gonna lie, I was somewhat influenced by a very big wedding that had happened the year before. You may recognize this dress. I was definitely influenced by Charles and Diana's wedding. I didn't like everything about her dress, so I definitely wanted something a little bit sleeker than what she had. But I wanted the full skirt, and I definitely wanted a big full sleeve. I haven't looked at this in a really long time. I'm gonna include some photographs from a scrapbook that I made that has a picture of the, the lace and the satin that I used. It was a brilliant white. And that's and that's how the hat looked. That picture was taken a couple weeks before my wedding. I wanted to do like a trial to see how my makeup looked, see how the dress looked, so that I knew if I needed to adjust anything for photographs, I could. Then my mother and I 
decided to go into New York City and buy the fabric. This was something we wanted, you know, a very high-end fabric, a very high-end lace, and we had such a fun day. It is such a beautiful memory of my mom. She's still around, but it was such a beautiful memory where we went into the city, we picked this out, and then we went out to lunch, and <laughs> funny little story, there was, you know, it's New York. We're in this little, little tiny restaurant, and the woman next to me, I could see her, she's like moving her head back and forth and back and forth, and I'm like, what is she looking at? Well, <clears throat> there was a cockroach walking along the chair railing behind us, and she was like, couldn't take her eyes off of it, and I very calmly took my shoe off and killed it, and we were done with that. But I don't know why that story sticks in my mind so, so much. So I had a fitted bodice that I wanted to have uh, lace applique on it, and so we, the lace we bought had a definite, like, open parts to it and uh, over-embroidered part. I think this is what they call a Chantilly lace, and that way I could cut some of the lace out and leave parts of the satin showing. I really liked the way that looked, as you can see that on the front. And on the back. So the most work really went into the bodice and assembling the bodice and then doing all that embroidery work. So my mother hand sewed all of the pearls onto the lace. She probably worked on that for about a week or so, maybe a little bit longer, and then we hand sewed the appliques onto the bodice. And she felt it was really important to have, if you can see here, little pieces of lace that stuck up over the edge in a couple of places because that's something we noticed in shopping for dresses so that's what we did and it's funny looking inside here I can see that I had to add extra lining inside the dress I'm pretty sure when it was so fitted that the parts where there was no lace like my skin probably really changed the way it looked because it's in the back and in the front where there's open areas for the for the lace. One of the other things we did was for the back, I wanted that uh, line of buttons going down the back. That was a very classic, popular look. Nowadays, you don't see that so much anymore. I would say that's probably replaced a little bit by that corset look. When I got married, this was still a very popular thing to do, was to have that line of buttons. However, I did have a zipper hidden underneath that because I wanted to feel very secure because these little button loops were just like elastic, very thin, skinny elastic. I did not trust them because this was a very fitted bodice. So those buttons really were just for show. And then down at the back, to cover the bottom part of the zipper, we added this little applique and it's just snapped into place. And looking at this now, I'm like, why didn't I use white snaps? Why did I use silver snaps? That's weird. Maybe white snaps didn't exist. I did have a train and what we opted to do was we brought some safety pins and at the reception we bustled the train up so that I could walk around freely and just have that tucked up out of the way and it worked perfectly it never fell down because we used safety pins you know my mom just went bloop bloop and I had two or three probably three safety pins just tucked up and uh, my skirt was bustled so the sleeves are like a little three-quarter length puff sleeve with just a little banded bottom with that same little button situation there and you can see this is where my elbow bent and I'm sure that is a perspiration mark. I also noticed <laughs> uh, on the back of my dress quite a few stains and the back is pretty dirty. Um, and I'm not sure what all that is from. Probably food and drink being spilled. I 
do recall getting into the limousine, someone stepped on my train and I had a little bit of a um, grass stain on the back of my dress. And at that point we were on our way to the church. I was like, whatever, I can't even think about that. But I don't really see it so much on here. The only other thing we did is I used some horse hair in the lining of the hem of the dress and the petticoat to help give it that kind of graceful fold and flare without being too puffy. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this hat. I'm just doing, I'm just walking down memory lane here. <laughs> so here you can see a picture of the hat um, close up. Here's me pretending, pretending to apply my makeup. Hilarious. So while we were shopping at that little fabric store, they had a pretty elaborate bridal department, and I went ahead and selected a hat. Hats were big in the 80s. This was like they had kind of not been big, and then this was just like uh, a resurgence of this trend. They were very trendy, and I've always liked hats, and I picked out this this little hat. And let, let me just tell you, I had no idea what I was doing because I had never worked with a hat ever. And so this was just based on kind of like what we saw, saw when we were shopping and what I could put together. So basically I covered this little hat in the satin of the dress. We added more of the lace. Um, I don't know if you can see here. I took some of the tulle, wrapped some beads around it to make the the edge of the brim and then I had this little um, this little piece of like a little floral a little bridal floral thing that is quite crushed and I don't really want to play with it too much because I don't want anything to happen to it even though you know I'm never gonna wear this again nobody's ever gonna wear it again I also put a little comb in the front to help secure it and I remember on that day I had my grandmother's hat pin stuck in the back of my hat. I have no idea where that went. It's not in with this stuff. I probably gave it back to my mother, but I haven't seen it in years. So I did have this to secure it in the front and a, a, a big hat pin in the back to hold it on. And you know, my look, if you will, you know, this, this brim was really, I, you know, worked it so it kind of tilted up. This side came down and I wore it kind of like that on my head. Um, as I came down the aisle, I had this little veil over my face. And this was puffy. This kind of stuck up and was like a little puffy behind me. And then when my father gave me away, and he was very nervous about this part, he had to lift this over, and then it just kind of became part of the puff in the back, and there I was. The only other thing about this, there's like two shorter pieces of the veil, and then this longer piece, and this, we actually made it so it could snap on and off, so I didn't have this great big long veil during the reception. I just had these two floaty, two floaty shorter pieces. So that's what I wore on my head. <laughs> Hilarious. So a few little footnotes to this, something that um, I didn't think about, but my mother suggested to me, she said, you know, this is a big dress and it's gonna be heavy and it's gonna kind of flatten you out. So we bought a padded bra to kind of help retain my shape a little bit, which I thought was hilarious. You can't really tell that I'm wearing a padded bra, but it did help keep that shape going in the bodice. As far as my makeup goes, I'm pretty sure I did not wear any foundation. I didn't wear foundation at that point age in my life, so I'm sure that's just my natural skin. And I can remember reading in a magazine, you want to look like yourself on your wedding day, but a little amped up. You don't want to look totally different. You just want to kind of zhuzh yourself up so that you don't get like washed out in the pictures. And that was what I went for. So I'm pretty sure I just wore like 
my favorite eyeshadow, my favorite blush. And the thing that I added, and I distinctly remember this, was I added like a, some kind of a lip gloss. It was a thick lip gloss. I never wore lipstick at this point in my life, and I didn't want my lips to look washed out, but I wanted them to look pretty natural, so I wore, that, wore this like mauve lip gloss. It came in a little tube. I borrowed it from my sister. Um, the other thing I'm wearing on my neck is a floating opal that belonged to my mother. She is uh, an October baby and opal is her birthstone and I always loved that little opal and so I borrowed it to wear on my wedding day instead of like a classic pearl. What else? Oh, so we got married in the morning. It was um, an 11 o'clock wedding and I remember we all got up very early and started the whole shower thing because in the house was, uh, you know, my parents, of course, myself and my two sisters. And, you know, we all had to get that shower thing going. I called for a shower and then my oldest sister helped me blow dry the back of my hair. I did the front of my hair, but she helped me blow dry the back of my hair so it looked good because, you know, you have all those altar shots where you're standing there and they see the back of your head. So she helped me with that, and um, I despised my flowers. My flowers came in and I was like, no, this looks like a cauliflower with some purple stuff hanging in it. Looking back at it now, they're probably not as bad as I think they were, or I remember them feeling about them. I wanted my bouquet to be more cascading. Think Lady Diana. She had this gorgeous cascading uh, arrangement that she carried. I'm sure it weighed a ton. I didn't want it quite that big, but I did like that soft look at the bottom. But here's a good look of what my um, bouquet looked like. It was white roses and purple status with baby's breath in there. That about wraps it up. We were children. This is from our dating days. I'll just throw a few more photographs up here. Obviously, this is the back of us. Actually, not as much of my head shows with that veil <laughs> that I thought would. And this gives you a good view of the, the dress. With the train and how the hat looked. So in case you're wondering, this is not my wedding album. I did not bring my wedding album up here. Do people still do wedding albums? I mean, it's like this thick. This is just something we got from the jeweler when we picked up our wedding bands. And I kind of made it a little scrapbook. The day of the wedding, I sent it around and people just signed it. And I think that's kind of cool. It's a cute, like a nice little memory of the people that attended my wedding. Oh, here you can kind of see the bustle. Bill's mother wanted to put something in their local paper. It was not anything I was interested in doing, but so she did this one, and I call this my ultra bright commercial because we're all teeth getting into the limo here. Hilarious. So one other thing that I remember from that day is I had a beautiful lace um, handkerchief that belonged to my grandmother and I think that got scooped up at the reception along with the linens and I never saw it again. Those little family mementos, <sighs> I was sick about that. So just a slightly different video from me. I hope you enjoyed it. It was certainly fun doing a little walk down memory lane. So if you are new to my channel and just stopping by for the first time, I publish videos every Saturday morning and I'll include a link to last week's video right up here. And if you like this video, I hope you will subscribe to my channel for future videos. Just click on this little B icon and that'll take you to the subscription page. Thank you so much and I'll see you real soon. Bye.